May the peace of Christ be with you, my dear brothers and sisters. Personally, as a Christian, I am not surprised when I see two Christians who misunderstand themselves or even engage in fighting and all that. But I am more scandalized when I see two Christians after fighting cannot, you know, be open to reconcile or cannot be humble enough to reconcile. Of course, we cannot avoid conflicts most times. You know why? Because we all have different temperaments. And because of these are different and divergent temperaments, that's why we clash. That's why we clash. But there's something that Jesus says to us about reconciliation, the various steps. Because to reconcile is a process. Jesus says to us today that if someone sins against you, take note of the word, the, the verb sins. Not as if the person sinned against you before, but the person habitually sins against you. What Jesus says to us today is that if someone sins against you, your brother, your sister, your friend, whoever, of course, this in this context, Jesus uses the word adelphos, a brother. Now, if someone sins against you, what should you do? Should you keep resentment or should you just bear the malice and all that? Jesus says, go to the person, talk to the person. There are two things I like us to look at, but before I talk about those two things, let us also move forward to what Jesus said. Bring the second person if the person refused to listen when both of you are just alone. Bring the second person. If the person refused to listen to the second person, the third party, then bring the community. In case the person refused to listen to the community, you got to bring another method. And what's the method? The method is that you should treat that person just like a tax collector. I will explain this. Now, let's go back to the, 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 the two major things that Jesus said in the beginning. Go. Talk. When we talk about to go, it has to do with breaking away from your comfort zone. To break away from your comfort zone. So, there are many factors that we have to consider. Number one is that for you to really go to the person who offended you, ordinarily, it is the person who sinned against you who should come to you apologizing. But Jesus wants us to take a proactive measure. He wants us to take the first bold step. That's what it means to be a Christian, to swim against the current. Because ordinarily, in our social system, the one who sinned against you should be the one to come to you to say, I am sorry. But you are the one going to him, not, not necessarily to say, I am sorry, but to find out. You know, to, because sometimes people sin against us without even knowing it. You know, there are many times you may have offended someone without taking note that you have offended the person. Until the person comes to you to say, this is what you did to me, brother. This is what you did to me, sister. Because most times we can just be silent and be dying in silence. And the person whom we think offended us may not be aware that he or she offended us. So that's why it is good to engage in this dialogue. So the first factor we have to consider, or anyone who needs to do what Jesus has you know, asked us to do today is, the person needs to be one who knows God. Our knowledge of God will control our disposition in entering into the process of reconciliation. This is very, very important. Because if you don't know God, you will never think about you know, taking this first bold step. Now let's look at the second part. Uh, that is the prayer life. You know, the more you are prayerful, the more you will be open-minded to entering into this process of reconciliation. That's second thing. The third one is the virtue of humility. You know, humility is not a matter of the kind of clothes you wear or where you are sitting in the church or the kind of uh, footwear you wear. No. Humility is all about knowing that I am nothing, that I am made from the humus, I am made from the soil. I am nothing. And that's why I should create space for God. So in this situation, you're not just creating space for God, but you are creating space also for that person that you are going to talk to. This is very, very important, my dear friends in Christ. So humility is one of the factors we have to consider in this, you know, in obeying this command that Jesus says, go talk to the person. So humility is the virtue, open-mindedness, and the trust. You have to trust that the person will, you know, will change. Because if I'm coming to you that you offended me and behind the behind my mind or at the back of my mind i already thought no this guy or this person is not ready to change no we have to be positive that this person i'm going to talk to is going to change so this is very very important for us to bear this in mind and the other one the other virtue we should also you know have is the virtue of confidence 
you know, because the next thing I'm going to talk about will remind you that you need to be confident. You know, that, that courage and fortitude, you need to have it. The other factor that we may consider, basically, is that we have to dismiss every doubt. If you are beginning the journey and the process of reconciliation, well, you have to remove every aspect of doubt. Because if you allow doubt to control you, when you get into the discussion, into the dialogue, you know, you'll be biased. So do not allow you know, that doubt to come into you. And any kind of presumption, do not presume anything. Be open-minded, that's the fact. Any dialogue that should you know, bear fruit must be a dialogue built on the pedestal of open-mindedness. The other one is that we have to remove every aspect of prejudice, biases, you know, resentment, bitterness. We have to remove that because if we do not, then it's going to affect us when we begin to speak. And that's why prayer life is very, very important, because the more we are prayerful, the more we are able to control our emotions. Why? Because prayer actually establishes us into a communion, into a fellowship with God, so that when we are very prayerful, we become God-like, we become Christ-like, you know, we become Holy Spirit-like. <laughs> All right, so now the next thing that we have to the factor we have to consider in this to go is to break away from our comfort zone you know our cultural orientation that this person maybe the one who offended me is a woman or a man then since i'm a man it is the woman who should come and beg me or since i'm a woman is the man who should come and beg me you know those kind of cultural orientation we have to break away from that or even you know um the things we used to know that this is the person who should come to me to apologize. No, Jesus says to us, take the first step. Okay, now let's look at the other one, the other, because I say there are two aspects, go. The other one is to tell. You know, as I said already, that there are people who offend us without knowing they have offended us because we all have different perspectives about certain realities. So there are people who can offend you without even taking note that they have offended you. And that's why you have to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, you're going to be suppressing it. You're going to be dying in silence. So the, 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 the talking aspect that you have to tell the person, you have to express yourself, express your feeling, but in a gentle way. And that's why I said in the beginning that prayer is very important because if you are connected to God in mind and body, you know, it will control your emotion. You're not going to burst. You know, you're not going to, you know, become so angry. Of course, there's anger in you, but you have to be in control of that anger. Okay? So, don't suppress your feelings. Express your feelings. Okay? Express it in a gentle manner. Express it, but not in anger. Enter into dialogue with open-mindedness. Get to listen to the person as you speak. After speaking, try to listen to the person. Let the person explain himself or herself. Even if the person have no reason to, to have done what she, he or she may have done to you, but you have to listen. And listening, as you know, involves a lot of things. It involves discipline, self-giving, you know, it involves really a lot of things. Attention and all that. So, it is a process, you know, that should, you know, start between two persons, as Jesus said. The first thing is that go to the person, two of you. Personally, when I reflect on this, I say to myself, you know, who are those two persons? Each of us, we are all composite beings. There are many times that we have problems, even within ourselves, that we blame ourselves. There are those who have locked themselves up in their mistakes. You know, you keep on blaming yourself for the mistake you have done. You know, you have not been able to reconcile your body and your spirit, your soul. Of course, the nature of the soul is that it is spiritual. So. The first two persons that should enter into the first process of, or the first stage of reconciliation is the body and the soul. There are many times that there are many things that your spirit or your soul wanted to avoid, but your body could not avoid it. And you have been living in regret. You have been living in guilt. You have been blaming yourself. So these two persons that Jesus speaks about today is your body and your soul, the husband and the wife, the father and the son. The, the mother and the daughter, the employer and the employee, you know, just look at it, begin, charity begins, you know, at home. So that's the basic thing. Then the other one that Jesus talked about is that if the person refused to listen to you, you should treat the person like a task collector. This is the aspect that many of us misunderstand. You know, the question for us to understand what Jesus means here is for us to look at 
the way that Jesus himself treated the tax collectors, how did he relate with the tax collector? Did he chase them away? How did he meet Zacchaeus, for instance? Do you remember that Jesus even ate, drank, you know, talked with the tax collectors? So, when Jesus said that if the person refused to reconcile with you or to forgive you, you should treat the person like a tax collector. It doesn't mean you should uh, reject the person. Rather, it means you should show the person more love. It's just like seeing yourself, engaging yourself in what we call primary evangelization. That's the invitation that we have, that that love is what Jesus is asking us to show to the person who have refused to listen to us. And what, how can we see this, this, you know, the manifestations of this particular love? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning from verse 4 to 7. You know, love is patient. You know, love is patient. That's the first thing that St. Paul says, which means that you have to be patient with the person. You have to endure the person. You should stop writing down the sins of this person. So, reconciliation is a process, and forgiveness is also a process. But we have to begin the process before we begin to complain, oh, this person is bad, this person has not come to, to beg me. No. You as a Christian, to be Christ-like means that you have to be active in the process of reconciliation. As a Christian, you should not be passive, you should be active. And you being active means you should take the first step. So, as we reconcile with our enemies today, let us remember that forgiveness is not forgetfulness.